Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? Sorry about that sigh, but I'll be sighing more as we go along. This is a paid request for Smack It Down. If you're watching, thank you so much for that. And for those interested, if you want to request pretty much any type of video, it could be a review, a topic, article, reaction, like reacting to pretty much anything, commentary, re review, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal. Or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for Dangerous Ground from 1997. And I think I saw this once before. I didn't remember it. Now I know why I didn't remember it. Because it's a really boring, crappy movie. It sucks. I mean, first off, it's from the director who did that Willie Mandela movie that I was requested to do a commentary on. About the Mrs. Nelson Mandela. Which was a really boring film. Also the director did Dracula 3000. Not even Dracula 2000. Dracula 3000. And this is a time when he... Ice Cube was working on the film. It was with New Line Cinema. And at the time, Ice Tube, you know, he had worked on Friday with New Line Cinema, and I think uh, the film he directed, The Players Club, I believe was New Line Cinema, and then next Friday, like, he had to deal with New Line Cinema, so this is one of the films that came up. And Ice Tube, as a former South African who has no accent, and, you know, sounds like Ice Tube. And they show a flashback of him as a kid, and the kid has an accent, but I guess he, when he was forced to go to U.S. because these riots and apartheid and someone threatens to go, listen, you leave or we'll kill you. So as a kid, he leaves for the U.S., makes a name for himself. We don't really get much of him in a San Francisco where he's from. It's just us telling him, us, the viewer, I worked with kids, tried to get them off drugs, tried to get better education, I had a fiancé, quite a few monologues of him talking about the landscape of South Africa, which he's come back because his father died, so he's come back for the funeral. A lot of him on his phone talked to his fiancé, which we never see his fiancé, we just hear a little bit of her voice on the phone. But yeah, if you want to buy Ice Cube as a former South African with well, yeah, no accent, who knows, man, maybe your accent does disappear, to be fair, after this many years. So he's come back to South Africa, like I said, for his dad's funeral. He has two brothers. One of them is pissed that he left and doesn't think he's a real African or a real South African and Ice Tube taught shit to him. It's, you know, brothers arguing, fighting. But the younger brother, Steven, he has disappeared. So Ice Tube says, okay, I'm going to go and find him, bring him back, and then I'll be back home. And, you know, there's stuff like part of the ritual for the funeral, you're supposed to kill an animal. Ice Tube doesn't want anything to do with that. He's given the spear that his dad had. And he's like, what the hell am I going to do with this? And then just a couple random things happen. Like, he drives around. He gets carjacked. He's looking for Steven. His neighbor, Steven's neighbor, is this stripper who's a crack addict. Played by Elizabeth Hurley. And, you know, I don't mind Elizabeth Hurley. She was the devil and bedazzled with Brendan Fraser. She was the female lead in Austin Powers with Mike Myers. Which I, I liked her quite a bit in that. It's a shame they got rid of her for the sequels. Like she was in the sequel, but then they got rid of her. I don't know why. I don't know if she just didn't want to do a full part. If that was by design, I don't know. But I mean, Elizabeth Hurley, I mean, she's a pretty... She's pretty for a crack at it, I'll say that. For guy, for a lady that will smoke a crack pipe, she surprisingly is well put together. Physically, because you watch other actual crack addicts. <laughs> it's not really a case. They had like three teeth 
and two are back there. Snaggletooth. But yeah, she's a crap pipe smoking stripper. But she does decide to help Ice Tube try to find the brother. The director likes to do this thing randomly where a scene will transition from black and white to color just because. And the dialogue talk about how like Ice Tube is giving these monologues and speeches or talk about you know be it was all, you know, separated. About how it was back to the day and then Elizabeth Hurley goes, Well, this is the new South Africa. They immediately touched to a stripper with a South African flag on her ass. And that's a uh, random thought. There's not a lot of the because this film did go theatrical. There's not a lot of theatrical films that have strip clubs in them. I just be deemed too dehumanizing to women. But there are strip clubs. They're still in existence. Maybe there are. I just haven't seen those movies. But like a lot, I mean, like theatrical films. You don't find a lot of that anymore. So they go on this search. It's a very boring, slow search. Looking at random places. Talking to random people. You have this almost random scene where these racists. Like the more mad Elizabeth Hurley thinking that she's fucking Ice Tube. It's really only there for Ice Tube to get the gun from them. Steer him off, fight one guy, and then keep the gun that he has for a good chunk of the rest of the movie. So I guess we gotta have him get a gun some way, so throw in this scene here. There's not much action. Like, you looked at the trailer, or you looked at some of the advertising. It's hard to call this an action movie, because really the only action is like in the last ten minutes of the movie. Veen Rames is in the film, and he definitely has the accent, South African accent, and he's pretty much like a wannabe Marcellus Wallace. There's even a bit where he's talking, it's from the back of his head, like in Pulp Fiction, but he's nowhere near as interesting as it was in Pulp Fiction. And he just comes off more goofy than anything. I mean, one of the first scenes he has with Ice Cube... Because Veen Rames is a drug dealer named Muti. Not Nuti, Muti. And the younger brother Stephen owes this guy money. And then he wants, what, like 40. No, uh, I think it was called 45,000 Rand. I think it was like $15,000 American. One of the first scenes is Veen Rames sucking on. Chicken feet. Like literal, here's chicken legs. And he's sucking on chicken legs. Not like, you know, KFC chicken, but like. Like here's the little legs. I, I did it. People do eat chicken legs. I did it. But it's still ridiculous for your main villain to have some of these little legs sucking on it as if it was, I don't know. Tarantino and his foot fetish. I don't know. Just... You might as well just have a lady there as he's talking, he's just sucking on her toes. Only this is like, hey, I don't see below the camera, maybe the chicken is still alive and just laying back and just being still because just enjoying the pleasure of being ring sucking on his toes. It is weird that. I'm sure it's, like he's really South African. He's sucking on chicken feet. I'm like, I thought it was goofy. I thought it was silly. I, I laughed my ass off. Not really, but I was laughing on the inside. On the outside, I went, what the fuck? On the outside, I went that. And then inside, I was laughing. And then, spoiler alert, they go to this like casino... 
Hurley and Ice Cube find Steven. Steven is in the drugs. He doesn't even know his dad's dead. Ice Cube's pissed at him, going, what the hell are you doing? You're throwing your life away. Ice Cube gets the money, or most of it, goes back. Vin Rames takes it, but at the same time he wants to make an example, because people think he's weak. Shoots Steven. They don't shoot Ice Cube. They don't shoot Elizabeth Hurley. Even someone asked, do you want us to shoot him? And he's like, no. So that was very stupid of him. So he's like the James Bond villain. You gotta let the hero live in order to get revenge on you. I don't know why they didn't expect revenge from these folks. And one they least another, they go back and Ice Tube gets his other brother who has these guns. They get this drug dealer Elizabeth Hurley knows to go in with a box has a bomb in it. It explodes. And then Ice Cube and the brother go in, they shoot with AK 47s. There's a decent amount of slow mo, but it's definitely no Jar Wu. I mean, the director, you may think he's Jar Wu in this scene, but he's definitely no Jar Wu. And sometimes it's edited a bit weirdly, as if they're trying to cut down on the rating or something. Maybe that's just me, but. There's some weird splotches of editing. Or maybe that editing, maybe it's framing, or maybe it's both, but... I don't know. The camera is much more interested in the environment being shot up than the people. It felt at times. And then what happens is... Ving Rains has to drop on them. Elizabeth Hurley's behind, shoots as a distraction... Ice Cube gets his father's spear, stabs Vin Rains a few times. Vin Rains goes out the window. And it's one of those that he goes out the window like three times via editing. And then Ice Cube decides to stay. And asks his fiance to come home there with him. You know what I would be like? You want me to come to South Africa? You want me to leave my home, everything that I've built up? Uh, like this, wait, you've been away for, like, I don't know, at this point, three days? Four days? And all of a sudden you want me to move all the way there and leave everything I have and leave, I don't know, my mellow yellow and, well, it'd be me talking, but, um, ching, goodbye. But she accepts and it's like, okay. Honestly, I'd be like, no, I want to go back to America. I think that'd be funny if they make the movie seem like it's going that direction. But then Ice Cube's like, nah, fuck that. I'm going back to America. <laughs> fuck that. I mean, I get why they're doing it. Because it's Ice Cube. He's become part of the family again. And he wants to help his tribe again. And Elizabeth Rose don't come live with them. So she can get off drugs. I mean, like, he wants to have these morals, but at the same time, it ends with, we gotta kill these motherfuckers, <laughs> and get these guns, so it's like, you wanna talk about these high-value morals, but at the same time, we gotta kill these motherfuckers at the end, so I, if it's trying to have this morality thing, is, I don't know, Ice Tube is Ice Tube. Ice Tube's not stretching any acting in this. I've seen Ice Tube in a lot of stuff. You've seen Ice Tube in this movie. And I wouldn't say he's boring. He does have moments of you getting pissed off. But I say it's just at this time frame, it's just Ice Tube being Ice Tube. If you like, I don't mind Ice Tube. I don't. I like Friday. I like Anaconda. I even like Ghost of Mars despite its flaws. So I did, you know, I, I did deal with Ice Tube. Yeah, he's done some bad stuff like Ride Along, Ride Along 2. What was that one? Uh, fist Fight or whatever. But he did really, in most of those movies, he really... 
you did what you did with Ice Cube. He's funny in 2122 Jump Street. But maybe, you know, if you get bored with his shtick, you know, I really don't find anything different. Elizabeth Hurley, again, she's the prettiest track edit I've seen in a while. But, uh, again, I like her. She does fine. Vane Rames is a bit hamming it up. You know, sucked on chicken feet. Sucked on chicken legs. The like actual chicken feet. It just like I said, if you're going for an action film, you only get an action in like the last ten minutes, and it's a you know lesser John Woo type of battle where they kill a couple people. The story is blasé, mediocre. The journey of them looking around for the brother Stephen is not really exciting. It's not really interesting. Yeah, it takes place in South Africa, but other than a few establishing shots, this honestly could have taken place anywhere. I really could have. I mean, I... yes, there's elements in there that make it reinforced that's in South Africa. Yes, I give you that. But I'm just saying, maybe at the beginning, like the first like 15, 20 minutes is going a bit into that. This way, South Africa. But later on, it becomes pretty inconsequential that it takes place there. Fairly inconsequential. The idea this could have taken place almost in any country. And it's just, like I said, a slow, boring film that just. It is like a 4.4 on IMDb. I can see why. I can see why. So. I, there's just a bunch of other better movies out there. Better movies are either about drug dealers. Or hell, if you want to see. Vane Rames in this kind of role. Go watch Pulp Fiction. You want to see Ice Cube in action. I mean. I'll take Ghost of Mars over this. I mean the. Boys in the Hood, they say Anaconda. You know, I hate to say this, I would rather watch Triple X Stay of the Union over this. Let me put it that way. I, I mean, when you want me to watch Triple X 2 Stay of the Union over your movie, because that's less boring, that says something. So, Dangerous Ground. And people go, well, it's not an action movie. Well, then what is it? It's not really a thriller. It doesn't go into a lot of deep themes of emotional turmoil or drama or heft of dramatic elements. As a drama, it's lackluster. As a thriller, there are no thrills. There's no suspense. It's not a mystery. It's not a comedy. Nothing. Uh, well, other than that one bit with <laughs> Veen Range. So, you know, it's labeled an action film, and as an action film, is boring as shit. So, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.